Welcome today to Social Media Attraction University. We are processing through a series right now that is entitled Monetizing Mayberry. This 12 chapter series provides you a clear understanding of what social media is to business and how you can begin uh, today to implement activities to grow your business and ultimately make money with social media. Hey, I'm Mark Bortz, and through this series, we will hear from Matt Cost, one of our senior account strategists, and as well, we'll hear from some special guests through a couple of the series. We believe that as a business, uh, you're going to value this information, and you'll begin to find traction with your social media efforts. We've designed these 12 chapters to build upon each other and to prepare you for experiencing real results on a path of success with social media. In chapter one, the new small town economy, we learned how social media is much like Mayberry, how relationships matter, that you must get your business involved and that you need a strategy or a game plan before you actually get started. Today we're going to walk through chapter four of Monetizing Mayberry, which is entitled, Don't Shoot Yourself in the Foot. We'll discover the lessons from the professional life of the deputy of Mayberry, the one and only Barney Fife. We'll learn that even the best laid business plans can blow up quickly with social media mistakes. Many times before you even get your gun out of its holster. We'll talk today about how to avoid costly misfires and how to keep your marketing efforts on target. In the previous three chapters, we laid the groundwork for establishing your social media direction and strategy. We've chosen Mayberry, the idyllic setting for the Andy Griffith show, as the perfect picture of the new small town economy. Keep in mind, in Mayberry, in Mayberry's economy, instead of brands pushing out their message through broadcast media, businesses pull their customers in. And they do that by building relationships with the community and inspiring those customers to spread the word for them. Since these chapters do build upon each other, if this is your first time in joining us, it would definitely be worth your while to watch the previous chapters in our archives at socialmediaattraction.com. These first chapters lay the foundation for each new concept that we introduce and they provide the proper context for this chapter and all of those to come. Through the web and through other digital advances, the world has become much like a small town. Since we can now communicate and interact in real time with those on the opposite side of the planet, communities are no longer defined by geographical boundaries. Not only is it uh, much easier and much quicker for media outlets to span the globe with information, but ultra-specific communities can actually be identified and targeted and isolated so that the media's message can be uniquely communicated to a, each particular part of the population. However, the biggest shift in the modern communication is the removal of the mass media gatekeeper. No longer is information filtered and disseminated by a select few media giants with the resources to push out the message. Now any individual can act as his or her own media outlet through a social network. You can create your own video channel through YouTube or your own uh, platform th uh, through blogs or microblogs. These technolo technological uh, advances have made our world much smaller. Geographical barriers and lack of resources no longer stand in the way of becoming a part of other communities around the world. The world is now much like a small town community. We've looked specifically at Floyd's Barbershop. Floyd's Barbershop 
is an institution in Mayberry with the whole town full of loyal customers. A competing barber with the resources to reach everyone in town with his message has no advantage over Floyd's Barbershop. Floyd, too, can reach everyone in the town, even with his very limited resources. It's the same in business today. Your website can reach the same amount of people as the pages of the corporate giants. So can your Facebook and your Twitter pages. What you need is the, snoo the new small town economy is a great resource that Floyd has which is relational equity. Floyd's customers are his friends and his brand advocates. He has a solid reputation and a good name in the community. But the relational equity that Floyd gained over the years wasn't given to him. He earned it. In Chapter 3, we discussed the two places where Floyd the barber does business, the bench and the barber's chair. The barber's chair is a place where Floyd does business. And the bench outside the shop is where Floyd grows his business. Deepening connections with the folks in town and making new connections. For the sake of our discussion, the bench and the barber's chair represent the two spaces where you as a business should be operating. The barber's chair would obviously be your store, your service location, or your website. The bench would represent the social networks, where you're able to connect with your prospects and your customer base, build relationships, develop leads, and expand your audience. Before you take off into the networks, though, you must understand that social media can be a loaded weapon. On one hand, capable of hitting the bullseye, helping you take new ground, defend what you already have earned. On the other hand, it can be not, if, if it's not handled properly, it can be a threat, and it can be a threat to its own operator. In either case, once the bullet is fired, it's not coming back. Just ask Barney Fife about the pitfalls of operating a loaded weapon. The iconic sheriff's deputy of Mayberry is charged with keeping the peace in town with his six-shooter. More often than not, however, the bumbling lawman's shaky nerves and lack of training turn his gun into more of a safety hazard than a security measure. Things happen fast online. Word spreads quickly. It's important for you to communicate quickly with up-to-the-minute updates and real-time responses. Customers don't send questions and comments through the social channels so that they can wait 48 hours for your reply. If they wanted to wait, they'd send you a snail mail. You must communicate quickly. That being said, you must also think through your messages to the world. The things you say in the social networks cannot be taken back. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that fashion retailer Francisca's Holding Corporation, which has 236 locations in 38 states, recently fired its CEO, Gene Morphis, for comments that he made on Twitter and Facebook. Mr. Morphus posted about earnings calls, snide remarks about short sellers, and boasted about successful share offerings. Now, if Barney waits until his confrontation with the criminal to first consider how to operate his gun, someone could get injured, and it may not be the bad guy. Similarly, when it comes to social media communications for your business, you must be prepared ahead of time for potentially delicate situations. Customer complaints would be the most common danger in the social realm. If you don't have a game plan for handling customer complaints and negative comments, or you haven't communicated that plan thoroughly with your team, 
you can very easily shoot yourself in the foot in public and online. I'd like to introduce to you Matt Cost, a senior strategist here at Social Media Traction. Matt has extensive experience with helping our clients to develop strategy and planning and keeping them out of trouble. Matt, go ahead, enlighten us on planning for negative comments. Thanks, Mark. A restaurant client of ours received a complaint via Facebook one evening from a customer who had had a bad experience in the restaurant. The restaurant owner immediately jumped into action and requested her email address so he could take the conversation offline. Once she messaged him privately, he took her post down from his Facebook timeline despite our objection to him doing so. Once she had aired her concern and it had been acknowledged, she quickly sent another private message. This time it was overwhelmingly positive. It said, thank you. I love your restaurant and tell everyone I know about it. I just want you to know this one experience will not hinder me from coming back. Now had the owner followed the plan we had established for handling customer complaints and left the complaint up on Facebook, he could have publicly displayed how well he takes care of customers. He would have also gained something invaluable, a ringing and unsolicited public endorsement from a formerly disgruntled customer. He also rang up a costly expense by deceiving his community. When a customer posts something negative about you in the social channels, you're not the only one that sees it. Depending on how long the post stays up, a significant number of your fans and friends of the person making the complaint will see the comment. Many of them will be curious to see how you respond. They'll monitor the post and see what you do to make the situation right. If you delete the negative posts that come your way, your fans will see you as disingenuous. They'll also be left wondering how many other posts you've deleted. As far as they know, you could get complaints all the time that simply get taken down. Thank you, Matt. You know, before social media existed, you had no idea what customers were saying about you when they left your place of business. Now you're not only able to see what they're saying, but you have the opportunity to address each one. We hear from people that say, I don't want to be in the social networks because I think I'm going to get customer complaints. While dealing with negative comments may be inevitable, just because you put your fingers in your ear doesn't mean that people stop talking to you and about you. Would you rather have people bring their negative comments directly to you? Or would you rather have them blast them out to their friends and family without you even knowing? You need a plan to respond to dangerous social media situations. And you must know how to use your weapons properly. Monitor. Listen. Respond with courtesy. And provide over-the-top efforts to make things right. What if Barney walked around town with his gun drawn all the time? How comfortable would people feel around him? What if Barney rounded every corner on Main Street with his pistol pointed like he was in a war zone? You could bet the citizens of Mayberry would go from feeling secure to feeling quite uncomfortable. People would avoid crossing Barney's path at all costs. The same can be said for a business, which only communicates through sales pitches. We've said this many times before, and it's worth saying it again. People don't get on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram to make purchases. They don't want to hear sales pitches. A business person making a sales pitch on a social network is like a crossing guard with his gun drawn. It's completely out of context. If your posts often include prices, phone numbers to call, brochure information, or imperatives like buy now or click here, you could be shooting yourself in the foot. 
selling to your followers lets them know that you're not interested in connecting with them. You just want access to their wallets. They will unsubscribe, unfollow, and leave your network just as quickly as they came. Your community wants an authentic connection, but they'll need to trust you. Matt has a great story about how Honda, the automobile manufacturer, got into some hot water. Honda got into some hot water in 2009 for some shady social media tactics in promoting the release of the new Honda Accord Cross Tour Honda launched a Facebook page to gather feedback most of it was negative except for one enthusiastic fan Eddie Okubo among the multiple comments Eddie wrote was interesting design I would buy this car in a heartbeat didn't take long for the other fans on the page to find out Eddie actually worked for Honda and they exposed him in front of the entire community one commenter said maybe you like the car Eddie because you're the manager of product planning at Honda the post included a link to Okubo's LinkedIn page Honda was forced to apologize for the lack of transparency and they changed their focus to another vehicle in their line. It's obviously a much better idea to let your fans give the endorsements than to toot your own horn. Oftentimes in Mayberry, Barney must rely on his fellow citizens in the fight against crime. You may remember the one episode where Barney actually gets his gun swiped by three escaped convicts. The outlaws hold him up in a cabin in the woods and Mr. O'Malley, the cabin owner, turns out to be the one saving the day and helping rescue Barney. Let your community provide your positive testimonials, and the trust and integrity will be authentic. And, and Matt, I hear you saying it again, that we need to model authenticity. On the other end of the spectrum, staying out of the conversation by remaining silent can bring consequences of its own. Another client of ours decided to dramatically scale back their efforts into social networks and to put their time and their energy elsewhere. After all, how much damage could be done without saying anything? Matt, what happened there? You do have the right to remain silent, Mark, but actually a lot of damage can be done by saying nothing. Completely withdrawing from a conversation midstream can speak volumes. Customers may be left to speculate on the reason for your absence. Is business bad? Did they lay people off? Or do they just not care? Withdrawing your presence in the social networks is not like letting your radio ad contract expire or moving your newspaper ad to the local magazine. People won't come looking for you. Customers know where you spend your marketing dollars can change based on the market. But in the social networks, there's no charge for participation. There's no fee for setting up a profile, posting an update, or responding to a question. So if you're ignoring your customers in this space, they'll notice. Matt, Harvard Business Management professor and uh, former Medtronic CEO Bill George tells the Wall Street Journal, CEOs should accept social media involvement as a part of their job description. This is a Harvard business management professor. He further says, people want CEOs who are real. They want to know what you think. Can you think of a more cost-effective way of getting to your customers and your employees? He adds. You know, carrying a gun is a vital part of Barney's job. It's also vital that business people participate in the social networks. People in your community want to know what your business has to say, and they want to know the people that, they're, that, uh, that are doing the talking. You can protect your foot by being prepared and knowing how to use your weapon properly. Think through a communication plan. Be sure everyone on your team agrees 
and is aware of the plan. Relate it to your customers in the context of the conversation and be active and be available when they ask you to communicate with them. You know, over the next several months uh, of Social Media Traction University, we'll unpack the principles of Mayberry. We'll provide you the education and the practical application for you to understand and implement a successful social media communications strategy for your business, one that will actually help you make money. Both Matt and I and some special guests will lead you through the matrix of understanding, designing, developing, managing, and implementing. We believe that with the right elements, you will succeed and you'll gain real benefit from your efforts. If you're an owner or a C-level executive, I absolutely encourage you to attend every session. It's crucially important that you understand and support those you have empowered to be social on your behalf. Let me repeat that. It's important that you understand and you support those that you have empowered to be social on your behalf. If you're an administrator, you'll absolutely want to attend every step of the way and be taking notes. We'll be providing you foundational building blocks, strategic concepts, and practical applications in every session. Join us again next month on February 12th for Monetizing Mayberry when we'll feature the chapter entitled, What's Goober's Why? We encourage you to comment and to feedback uh, with us, and we'd like to hear from you. So please, call or email us with your questions or your thoughts. We look forward to being with you next month on Social Media Traction University. Thanks for attending today.